Wicked Tuna Real Talk. All right, we are on. You just watched the new episode of Wicked Tuna, and now it's time for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, the weekly web show where some of Gloucester's best bluefin tuna captains join me to discuss the latest episode. My name is Mike Salk. I'll be with you for the next little while in the hot seat this week. We've got Captain Dave Marciano of Hard Merchandise, Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel, and Captain Paul Ebert of the Kelly. And thank you guys for being with me. Let's start here with the bad weather because it got ugly like right away. <laughs> and Tyler, that just seemed to bring something out. He's like, I know why TJ's not on the show with us because he pretty much took off and was gone for the rest of the episode. <laughs> so we'll deal with that maybe another day. It's like, all right, bye, TJ. You don't seem interested in catching tuna this week. <laughs> Tyler, you just smart. went on a tear. You're like, bad weather, let's go. Yeah, I love it. Come on, they bite in the bad weather. Low pressure's coming through. Yeah? Yeah, what are you gonna do? We're, come on, we're trying to make money here. The fish are here, you gotta fish. It's definitely doable weather. We ain't taking any scary risks. Well, there's some calculated risk involved there, right? I mean, the moment you hear that warning go off on the radio, you gotta at least start thinking, okay, there's a lot of how, risk. how worth it is this to me today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just try and finish out the day, get that last tide change in, and hopefully you can make it happen and a rod bends over. And that, lucky enough for us, that's what happened. Yeah, and Dave, you did the same. You decided to stick it out there, and uh, you've got precious cargo on your boat. It's not just a couple of guys you've picked up. You've got family on your boat, yeah, so it's yeah, got to make yeah. that decision even a little bit more difficult. Yeah, you know, for any of us, too, it's a, it's a judgment call. You know, it's always a fine line. Sometimes, you know, I head in before a guy like Tyler, right, just for the simple fact that I've been there and done that, you know, when I was in my 20s. At this point in my life, I don't need to beat myself up unless I really have to, you know? And so we stuck it out, we got a fish. But you know, like what happened when Tyler was lifting his fish, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get hurt. That dangerous. just goes to show you something we do all the time, pick the fish up, put it in the boat. Yeah. Now fortunately Hard. nobody was hurt, but you know, you can see when you get a 400 pound fish, Swinging in the breeze because of those big seas. It's wrecking a 400 ball. pound wrecking ball, right? Now, what happened to Travis? That's Travis, right? Yeah, yeah Travis, got Travis, is that thing. Travis is a trooper. I mean, he's true yeah, and true. Yeah. He's commercial and salty as the right. ocean. I mean, look at He's hanging on to the gaff. He's doing everything <laughs> he can to get that fish in the boat. Right. I mean, you can't blame him for trying. He puts sure, his heart and sure, effort yeah. in everything. It's a judgment call, like Dave said. I've seen people get hurt that have been doing this for 30 years. The way I look at it is, I'm not going to stay out there if it gets too bad where you're going to break them off anyways. Mm -hmm. Like, we've known there's been tons of fish out there, but you're going to lose them in 15-foot seas. There's no sense on going out there. What, you hooked up? Big deal. You're going to get hurt. Someone will get hurt. You know, we were already there. The weather was coming. Yeah. We put one in the boat. Yeah, We've yeah, been yeah. marking And them. then you got the you hell know, out of there. Yeah, I got a lot of confidence in well, my you, boat. Tyler, did. Tyler my stuck crew. around, tried to grab one more. Dave got out as soon as the yeah. as soon as soon he caught the fish. But Tyler, you you look, hey. Hey, as, after as the long season as I here, had last year, I'm catching them this year. I ain't going anywhere, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. man. We're staying. What do you say to somebody? Because you're a pretty hard-charging guy. You know, what do you say to somebody who looks at you and says, I, I don't know, man. You're putting your boat at risk. You're pr putting your crew at risk. Well, you got to have confidence in your boat. you got to know you can get to and from. Obviously, have, when weather's coming, you know, you're in communication with people on land. They know where you're at. They know what your ETA is, when you're expected in. He's still you learning, know, You too. know, you're watching the like, weather. I mean, I've been fishing a lot, right. Paul. I'm not still yeah. learning about when I'm going to stay out in weather. I mean, it wasn't like it was going to blow 40. He's doing yeah. what it you takes know? to get the job done, right? right. You know, I want to make money. Was, I mean, yeah. if they're biting. Why aren't right. we going to go? And, and, you know, it's a simple difference, right? Like, my boat's paid for, all right? When I was 20 years old or in my 20s, like Tyler, I was still paying off the boat. Yeah. I might have pushed a little harder then, too. You know what I mean? It's all, it's not like, you know, he was off taking something crazy. He just no, he wanted was to push, it out of, push out. harder than, than, you know, I wanted to. You worried all when the wa when the water starts filling up a little bit in the boat? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, we took over some. We took on that ride in. That was quite the ride. I mean, we blew out all the antennas on the roof. When yeah. we got in, they were on the deck. It was a rough ride in. But I mean, my guys never once did they ever question my judgment or question what we were doing out there. They had complete total confidence in me, and that's what's important. I as might a have questioned your judgment as that fish was hitting me if I was trying. I was like, <laughs> I hey, know. can we find another way maybe to that. put this fish down here without having to raise it up nah, in the air? I, just, I guess I got to get a door. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the other guys seem to have doors. I thought you guys were going to cut a guy. <laughs> Man, all right. What's the worst weather you've been out there in, Paul? I've been in some big seas years ago down in Carolina. Yeah. In a 23 foot sea, uh, sea craft center console boat. There was 25 foot seas. That's the worst I've been did in. Did you have to make it out? Coast Guard? How did that go? There was a Coast Guard cutter that came out. Well, what happened was I went. I, was, I traveled like 50 miles down the beach. I was running a boat for one of the tuna buyers and he said it was flat calm. <laughs> so I went down there and went 
up to the reef. I was still 30 miles offshore, mm -hmm. but I'm still going down the beach. When I got there, it was, it was really, really bad. Once you turn that corner, it was like chaos. And the center console broke on me oh my. and pinned me. So you're lying on the boat pinned? I'm I was pinned. The center console pinned me against the backrest. It was a center console. Like a bug. Oh, yeah, it pinned me. And the mic was right there. So I grabbed the mic and I called. They were like, who's this? I was like, it's me. I'm stuck. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> well, they couldn't believe. They were all scared being out there in those big boats. Mm. Dave, how about you? you? You decided, hey, I'm out after the one fish you caught. What's your, your craziest story at sea? I, you know, I don't know. Between all the fishing I've done, not only in my boat and other boats, I mean, I, I've seen some um, weather, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's always a judgment call. But, you know, I think, I guess the worst with my boat, the one we see on the show, would be um, six months after I bought it, you know, when I was still kind of getting used to the boat, so I wasn't sure of the boat and knew exactly what it meant. We were fishing down off the Great South Channel, off of Cape Cod. Uh, you know, we, we were fishing for giant tuna. The wind was scheduled to, um, you know, forecasted to blow up to 35 knots that night. Uh, we were spending the night. Ultimately, the wind came up to 55 knots Oof, uh, yeah. during that night. So it was a long night of literally one wave at a time, just, you know, driving the boat into the seas. You don't want to anchor when it sets out, you know, the seas get too big, they'll pull the boat right under, right? So a long night of one, um, one wave at a time. And, you know, that was the first time really I was, you know, I don't want to always say I was in fear, but I was like, okay, you know, this, at this time I may have bit off more than I can chew. So I had to really pay attention to what we were doing. And I didn't know the boat as well. You know, I had, hadn't owned it for many years. Again, it was just six months after buying this boat, that, you know, that I'm in now. So, uh, you know, we made it through the night, it turns out. But it was just during that night, uh, two other boats went down. You know, one of them sank at anchor. <laughs> and that was a 55-footer, and we're 35 feet. And, uh, and then a 70-footer had problems that night and blew all his windows out. So, you know what I mean? That's Hearing what I said. other boats sink puts right. the fear into yeah, you. Watching you know, other so, boats sink. And that sink. was all, you oh, know, yeah. like within a 10-mile radius of where I was fishing. So, you know, after that, I said, you know, that's when I realized I got a good boat, you know, for this new boat again, because I was still getting used to the boat at that point. I wasn't too sure what she was capable of. You know, now at this point, you know, a dozen or so years later, you know, that boat, has brought, that boat has brought me to hell and back enough times to, you know, it's all a question of whether I want to take the abuse. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what it comes down it to. It could be all about the boat, but the boat's as good as the captain. The boat will withstand more than the human. Yeah. I want to get to my one of my favorite moments of this week, and that is uh, the incredible sleeping Dave Marciano. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in a sleeping bag. So you got your kid out there, you got Jay out there. Yeah, They've yeah, got yeah. fish on the line. Now, uh, as if that doesn't make enough noise, they're ye uh, Jay was yelling. <laughs> it's a tuna. Like it wasn't once or twice. Like hey, get <laughs> right, up, right, it's right. a tuna. There was a lot of yelling. So how deep under were you? Uh, listen, I don't know. I mean, I I must have been out of it. Look, I was down there catching up on my beauty sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, as you guys know, Much I can use a lot of that. Proof Boat. But, uh, you know, and, and again, usually I stay up, I push pretty high, but, you know, whatever, I laid down, and uh, I must have been, I was out of it. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> How hard is that transition? I mean, look, we've all taken a nap before, and all right, of a sudden right, you right, wake right. up, well, like, you're... I got kids, your right, kid yeah. all of a sudden starts climbing on you in the middle of the nap, you're like, oh my God, I've got to be a dad again. How hard is it to go from being asleep to being, um, I'm in the middle of a fight with a 500 I think all of us have been through It's growing. messed up, it's messed up, because you know what? Like, you know, again, I think if I remember, you know, for a second, you don't know if you're dreaming that this is all happening or is this really happening. And, you know, for like that split second, you don't even, re you know, am I on the boat? Or, you know what I mean? Where am it's I? It's like anybody has probably experienced that. When you get, when you get wake, woken up out of such a sound sleep, there's that, you know, second and a half or whatever it is. Well, you don't know what the hell's Dude, going on. Dude, where's my car? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get just yeah, as yeah. tired. When you're the captain, I mean, you yeah. don't really sleep. Like, you might go down for your sleeping you ship, rest. but you're still in control yeah. of the ship. Like, if you hear a noise or you take away the wrong way, you, like, yeah, wake yeah, yeah. up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're never really get 
good sleep out there as far as the captains go. So like when we do finally get in a good REM sleep, it's hard to wake us how, up. Uh, yeah. How do you work out that schedule? You guys have told me that someone someone's watching all night long. Someone's oh, always awake. Yeah. So yeah. how how do you work out the schedule of who's going to sleep when? When the fish are biting, you know, usually the captains are up and being productive. And, you know, we kind of figure it out because we spend so much time on the water. And then when it gets slow, that's when we tend to get our beauty rest. Yeah. Right. Some right. of us need more than others. No, and that's it. I think when I laid down, it was like the middle of the day, which is usually there's slow. nothing going on. Yeah. Right? So it was like, all right, now's a good time. I'll take a nap till, you know, towards the end of the day, towards sunset. That's when there's been a lot of bites happening. So it's like, okay, now's a good time to squeeze in. Give me a little the next merchandising <laughs> idea for Wicked Tuna. Here's what we need. We need the <laughs> J alarm clock. You can <laughs> sell it at home, and right? if you need to wake tuna. up, you just... It's a tuna! It's a screamer! <laughs> like, tell me that would not wake people up. Screamer. I would buy that. He's I would buy that. <laughs> Paul, you've uh, you've spent make your days. Make on, a great on... cell phone ring too. Isn't it? <laughs> please, Is there an app please don't give him any ideas. I don't think we need that. Do you have any rules or guidelines, Paul, about how, how much you sleep people get or how much they need to get anything? No, like that? the thing is. I like to be awake all the time, but all of us know we can't. We get run down just from being awake, not even doing anything. Just being out there on the boat runs you down, mm -hmm. burns you out. So I get whatever I can. I usually wait till the nighttime. You ever insist and that I somebody else on your boat get some sleep? Like, hey, you, you, this Always. is too much, And man. your mates will come to you and they'll be like, hey, man, I'm really, I need a Burnt nap, out. I need, I need I a need sleep. A, come on, yeah. can I, and I'll be like, sure, you know, and we're Go always ahead, trying to catch up on hours, steams and know? stuff like that. You know, we're really good about working together because, you know, you're living together on the boat. I mean, when we go out fishing, sometimes we're doing a five-day trip. Yeah. I mean, you got to work out sleep for five days before you hit land. I mean, there's a lot of communication that you got to have with each other. And obviously, we're not trying to push each other to the breaking point. you got to be flexible with each other. But, you know, our drive to catch these tunas will make us stay up and make us do some crazy things. Yeah. And staying out in some rough yeah, weather. Yeah, you get the weather, you get the sleeping. There's a lot <laughs> to contend with out there. Yeah. That actually brings us right back to the competition. We've seen all kinds of hot and cold streaks on this show. TJ and his crew in the hot tuna might be the best example, right? They really started off hot, no real pun intended, at the beginning of the season. Then I just took one conservative decision decides he doesn't want to be around for the for the rough seas, and the next thing you know, he's down in third place. So. I like to trade boats for the weather. I mean, you take my boat in, I'll fish yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how intense is the competition right now? It's, it's intense. I mean, hence why I'm staying out. You know, we all want to be the top boat. We're all buying to try and make some money. The fish are worth money this year, and everything's going well, so. We this, all compete even before the season starts. We're all competing. Getting our boats ready. Getting, getting the getting boats the ready. First. What do you got? What are you doing? What are your plans? Who's fishing with you? What, you know, what, what information you have you heard? Who you're selling? Everything is a competition. Dave, you've never won this thing uh, since we've started Wicked Tuna, but the up and down nature of the way this season has gone, does it make you think this is this, uh, you get a better shot this year? You know, I don't know. I, I mean, the game's not over yet. Since, you know, we've, I've been second place two, two seasons out of uh, four, right? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's like, okay. And again, and again my thing is, is, I've got nothing to prove. I've been doing this a long time. As long as I catch enough fish to pay my bills and pay my crew, I'm good with that, right? I don't have to. Again, I could have stayed out and fished for that extra fish just like Tyler, but you know what? I've done that before. I don't yeah. need to. You know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't, I ain't been there yet, that, so I'm, I'm we, on my way. We did that 30 right. years you know, ago. It's, it's not oh, a diss, it's you know, not a diss against me. you, yeah. Tyler, but, yeah. you know, again, when you've been around the block enough times, you know, every now and then it's okay to, you know. How many times we sat at the dock take, and been like, dang, I wish I was out there. I wish I was out there. You know a what lot. I mean? Come There's on. There's got to be a proverb here, maybe a fable about Dave and Tyler in some <laughs> regard. You, you decide to stay out. The competition is tight. You get the sense that maybe effort or just sheer grinding is going to be the yeah, difference this year grinding. in the competition. Yeah, totally. Tyler you know, can grind. I'm a big grinder. There's There's no doubt. Been he grinding. earned what he got. You, yeah. When you fish in weather like that, you earn it. It's like people I'm say we're making money. That. Yeah. We're actually earning it to the, you know, to I mean, no you don't, tent. It's not, you know, you're not steaming out there into the rough weather. It's like you're out there, it's coming as the storm approaches, you know, you're trying to squeeze out that last tide change and then, you know, you got to head for the beach. I mean, we're not doing anything irrational. We're just, you know, we're being smart about it and yep. pushing the envelope just a tad bit. I want to stay, uh, one other little part to this season that has just been a great thread throughout has been your personal competition with the tuna.com. Oh, and you, you, you're continuing to throw out, well, you're throwing the barbs once again. You call Dave a glorified boat driver. He takes his boat out to the ground so Sandro can catch the fish. I mean, I don't even think Dave needs to go on the boat anymore. Sandro's got it all under <laughs> Dave control. Dave fishes hard, though. 
He does. Dave's a hard fisherman. He's a good fisherman. He's just, it doesn't sound like you want to admit that. Well, he's a good, I think he's a glorified boat driver. I don't think he's the one making the decisions on his boat anymore. Really? I think so. So I you think, think Sandro's in charge and I think Dave Sandra, drives? To, he's, Sandra's he's in a charge. boat driver. But Dave is the boat driver. He okay. turns the key and drives the boat around. Man. Well, he's, he's, he's no longer the fisherman on board that vessel. It's a personal issue. Anyways, yeah. Dave's a good fisherman. He's proved it to everybody. He's a good fisherman. What do you think of this competition, Paul? You've got to watch this from afar. Let's take away all his mates and see how good he is. What What do you think of this competition between these two? I I think it's going to go on forever. (laughs) It's just who they are. You know what I mean? Dave is a very Dave is very competitive. And I mean, I mean, I'm like one of the youngest probably people in this industry that's successful it's and I'm different. definitely a tuna junkie and I feel like you know that I, for me at this young age I know that you know when TJ was a lot younger he was when I was growing up I always heard hot tuna was catching him hot tuna was catching him and it was TJ's drive to keep fishing and stuff like that that I kind of looked at him as a role model and I tried to fish like he used to fish I like the phrase tuna junkie if you're watching this that is probably what you are as well that's also all the time <laughs> we have for today I want to give a big thank you to all three of these guys Captain Dave Marciano the hard merchandise Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the pinwheel and Captain Paul Hebert of the Kelly Ann you can go to natgeotv.com slash real talk to watch all of the Real Talk episodes. We'll be back again right after the all new episode of Wicked Tuna on National Geographic Channel. That's Sundays at nine o'clock. We're gonna see a new boat joining the competition. We'll see the fleet's underdog boats struggling to stay afloat and over on .com. We'll see what happens when Dave is away, just like Tyler suggested, and first mate Sandro steps into the captain's chair. We'll have Paul and Marciano back here to talk about that, as well as Captain Dave Carrera of Fishing Vessel Tuna.com. To get daily updates on everything Wicked Tuna, just like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter to get daily updates on everything. We'll see you guys next time on Wicked Tuna Real Talk. Thank you.